Stickers and Scuffs are proud supporters of Laps for MD. Laps for MD helps those with muscular dystrophy by raising funds, supporting MD charities through racing. We encourage those who are not already a part of the Laps for MD family to check them out on social media and their website, lapsformd.blogspot.com. Welcome, race fans, to the Stickers and Scuffs podcast with Cam K and Graydon Bunn. True Canadian race fans. This show is presented by Remax Jack. Call Remax Jack and start to pack. Green flag is out. Let's get this podcast underway. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Stickers and Scuffs podcast with Ken K and Graydon Bunn. We are welcoming in driver for DGM Racing. Actually, at Coda in a couple of weeks, Preston Pardis is joining us on the Stickers and Scuffs podcast. Preston, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, guys. I appreciate you guys having me on tonight. Yeah, we're really excited to have you on. You know, it's 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 funny because, oh, when I started watching racing, there was a Pardis racing in the NASCAR Bush Series driving the 32 Outdoor Channel Chevrolet, one of my favorite favorite paint schemes because it had a moose on the side of it. I always thought that was <laughs> um, Preston. Let's talk about dad first. Uh, how was it having a father in NASCAR while you were growing up? That's got to be a crazy, crazy experience. And now it's kind of come full circle as you're taking uh, your steps into the NASCAR Xfinity series as well. Definitely. Yeah. It, it really has come full circle. Um, I was really young at the time when he was doing the NASCAR gig. Um, it was I was probably four, four or five at the time. Um, his last year was 02. So I kind of wish he kind of extended the career a little bit or I was a little bit older at the time just to really relish the moment. Um, but I did remember a lot of aspects of it, either being at the track a little bit in the RV or um, being in the race shop. So it was really cool to be a part of that. Um, I don't obviously think I would be in racing or motorsports without him um, kind of making me live that lifestyle. I mean, I, I love the sport, obviously, but – uh, I just, I don't think I'd be this into it, um, but it's awesome. I, 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 I got really lucky. I feel like they even be where I'm at. Um, and like you said, just growing up, he kind of got out of it uh, at the time when I was just getting old enough and we moved down out of North Carolina to Florida and kind of steered away from racing quite a bit. And lucky enough for me, he got me into quarter midget racing around eight. So um, ever since then, we kind of uh, hit the ground running. Perfect. And one of the things that we do see you driving in is, of course, the DGM team. So this is kind of our first full circle as we've had Josh, Mario, and um, we've had Alex on the show. Now we have you. Uh, we just got a couple more people to get everybody. In <laughs> get the whole group. <laughs> yeah, the whole team uh, photo. To get the whole team photo on here. It'll be the unofficial podcast of DGM Racing. <laughs> but um, how did that partnership happen? Um, obviously there's, there's normally what we see is a ladder system. You know, Mm -hmm. you come through ARCA, you go through K and N, um, or I guess the Menard series now trucks and then Xfinity for you was a little bit different. You kind of started straight into Xfinity. So how does the, how did that come about? Yeah, it was really unorthodox. As you said, um, I don't think really anyone's taken the route that we did. Um, it's not by how we kind of wanted to do it, but, uh, it got me here, I guess. But yeah, we started off, like I said, quarter midgets um, at New Smyrna and the little New Smyrna, which is inside of the racetrack, which is yeah. awesome um, being there. I did that probably for three or four, actually not three or four, I did that for about seven years in the quarter midget stuff. And that's before kind of the boom of kids going from into the pro trucks from quarter midgets or late models. Um, so I kind of just did that as long as possible. Uh, and we started seeing guys that I raced with go to you know the bigger track. And it just, it wasn't in it for us, um, for the amount of money it takes to go run a late model program or a pro truck and add in the fact that you could tear up a car because you're still learning, obviously. Um, so we kind of didn't want to do that, or I, I kind of did, but <laughs> Dan, he didn't, he didn't think that was a good, uh, financial decision <laughs> at the time. Um, so luckily, uh, he found SCCA, uh, mm-hmm. through some friends of ours and he found the spec Miata class which I think that's all you can ask for in almost grassroots racing. It's about as oval as road course racing can be. <laughs> um, it's got the short track aspects in it of, uh, although it's a production car, it's somewhat of a stock car with the specs they have. Um, everyone's kind of got the same stuff under the car. So it really allows you as a driver to develop 
kind of how you should, I feel like, um, without costing too much. Obviously, racing's not cheap these days, but um, it's def- it was definitely the cheaper route where I could run tracks like Daytona, Road Course, Sebring, Road Atlanta, VIR, a lot of tracks that you dream as a kid to you know partake in. If you did the short track route, you really can't do that. I mean, obviously go to iconic short tracks, but you're not going to bring a super late model to Michigan or one of those tracks, you know? Um, so you could on iRacing or something though. So um, it, it was cool how we did it. Um, like I said, and lucky uh, after four or five years of learning and tearing some stuff up, we finally had some good runs going um, and luckily won the SCCA championship back in 17 at Indy, which was huge. I feel like for my career. Um, being against 92 guys, it was, it was a nice accomplishment and it got me to the Mazda shootout, um, got me a little bit of recognition. And then, uh, when we were kind of looking for our next step, there's really Mazda has a nice ladder. They had the Mazda road to 24 shootout. Um, mm-hmm. if you are recognized in grassroots racing to them, uh, you get an opportunity to get a hundred thousand dollars and go run the global MX five series, which is awesome. Um, although we kind of, thought about doing that route but um for us like i said my dad's envision was kind of doing the nascar stuff so opportunities came available to where we could go do a few xfinity races part-time mm-hmm. so like you said it's a little unorthodox to get to nascar from driving a 120 horsepower miata to a 600 yeah. horsepower yeah car, but we got here <laughs> you but it? you yeah you that opened it up perfectly for me. What I was going to sort of break the ice with you. Speed is all relative, right? It doesn't matter your discipline. You just have to have sort of the understanding of what, what makes that particular race vehicle go fast, regardless whether it's, it's breakneck horsepower or momentum based or that sort of thing. And, and you seem to have that concept. I mean, going from spec me autos, which mm-hmm. in itself, like you line up a bunch of, uh similar type race vehicles it comes down to the driver i mean that that develops driver i i mean i'm a fan and i've i've done some back road country boy racing but that's <laughs> as far as i've gotten uh but i mean that's what it takes right to to uh, like to understand what makes that race vehicle go fast mm-hmm. and then just adapt as you change disciplines right no exactly um, and that's yes. not sorry i i didn't mean to butt in again but like that's not something that everybody is born with like that's not something you can teach yeah uh, sorry there <laughs> yeah, that's right no like you said the spec me on it it's actually i mean you kind of have to have like you said the instincts and stuff but which is really nice about spec miata um it's a highly competitive class like i said i rock esque but you're racing road courses a low horsepower so it teaches you a lot about momentum and that's really mm-hmm. crucial i feel like um it's all about carrying men corner speeds so I mean, it's whoever can get to the corner of the fastest stop and get out of the corner, you know, yeah. that's really, if you dumb it down, that's kind of what it is. But also, I mean, like I said, spec me out, I'm so competitive. A lot of pro guys come back and race in the series. Um, I'm still active in it very much. So mm-hmm. we still run six races, probably a year, six events, um, mm-hmm. including the championships. But also when I was learning in the class, we had probably three or four guys from pro racing or they've jump started a pro career winning either Rolex 24s racing Trans Am, a bunch of classes. Uh, and at the same time you have guys coming out of karting world champions, getting into spec Miata, uh, just to learn race craft a little bit. So it yep. doesn't hurt at all when you have those, those guys to race against and help you learn. Um, and then just learning the car too, with a momentum base, like I said, that's an amazing career building workshop. I mean, like you said, where you have all those different types of drivers, essentially in one place and then you said like the the amount of people you're competing with in the scca with your conferences and everything Mm -hmm. like that that's an amazing talent pool to be among and to be at the top of (laughs) yeah and like i said i don't think i would be here without the the talent field i mean it only makes you get better i didn't win like i said earlier in an interview with the, the boys i mean it took me probably four or five years until i actually won my first national um and that was when i won indy but like I said, it's just without those guys pushing you to get better, um, mm-hmm. I don't think you can excel as a driver as quick. Um, at the beginning, I was rough on equipment. I didn't know how to heel and toe, or I, and mm-hmm. I didn't really understand the concept of carry momentum and stuff. And it 
it either taught you or you just you were going to keep on getting beat down you know yeah so um it was great and also like i said the cars they're just they're bulletproof because they're street cars i mean mm-hmm. they run you see miatas all over the place still 20 year old cars and that's what spec miata is um so they're super durable um and it teaches you a lot about cars h pattern shifter no abs Obviously, they don't need traction control when they make only 120 <laughs> horsepower, but uh, it's really not computerized to where you see cars nowadays and road racing, um, a lot of the TCR and all that. I mean, that's a bunch of computers and stuff, which I'm not saying is a bad thing, but it kind of teaches you what driving is without assistance. So when you get a stock mm-hmm. car, which has nothing, you're kind of on a level playing field where you kind of know some of that stuff, which is nice. That's a lot like our uh, Nissan Micra, now Nissan Sentra Cup Series, right, Cam? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, and it's it's funny because I, I, I love hearing this, this point of things because you're kind of the perfect person to talk to after what we just went through with the NASCAR Cup reveal for the, the next gen being more like a normal, you know, passenger car mm-hmm. and being more or less spec. And also going more road racing and talking about street racing. It all kind of sounds like something that would work perfectly for your kind of um, background. So, you know, you, it was a pretty, I'd say a pretty smooth transition for you going from the SCCA into the Xfinity series. And you got, what was it two? I think you got two top tens in four starts last year. Mm -hmm. Like that just doesn't happen nowadays. And not only that is, you know, we've talked with DGM, you guys are the underdog of the underdogs, you know? Mm -hmm. And the fact that you guys were able to get that, and those other races, you were running up in in pretty well good condition, in in really good standing, and may have had some mechanical gremlins or people people took you out, which I will remember, because that seemed to be the case a lot of the time. but is the preparation that SCCA gave you, is it, do you think, more useful than, say, a K&N or an ARCA series? Because you've got a, you've been learning different ways of driving. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I don't, for road course racing, definitely. Um, yeah. I feel like it, it's definitely prepared, prepared me a lot for that. Um, the only problem is if we ever get on an oval. We might have a little bit of a learning curve unless we go to a short track or something um, to just develop on before we get an Xfinity car there. But I do think it's helped out quite a bit. Um, but obviously, too, I feel like you got to obviously have a great team under you, a great group of guys to only make you succeed. Um, it's not a one man sport, obviously, as you guys well know. Um, so it, it takes a lot of people behind the scenes, too, which helps our effort out a ton. Uh, when we did our first two starts in 19, uh, it was a family owned team, which was awesome at yep. the time. It, same guys, Tony Fur and my dad. Um, and we had good runs. I mean, it definitely was a learning curve. I'm glad we had practice and qualifying at the time because I needed every minute of it. Um, made a lot of mistakes on my end. Um, I had a little learning curve, like I said, as a team, but it was more or less on me. Uh, <laughs> we had a good run in final practice. I remember our first year and I destroyed the car run. We were like 10th on the board at the Roval. Right. Um, so I'm glad we got that kind of out of the way before last year started and Luckily, we hit the ground running uh, with DGM at Indy. We had a top 10 in Road America. We had another top 10. Um, but like I said, I think it's all about the guys you have behind you. Um, like I said, we have Tony Fur in the box, legendary crew chief. So that's awesome to have. I mean, you can't ask for anything better when you're starting out a career. Um, so that was nice. And then obviously with Mario and his wealth of knowledge and the extremely serious now and having the teammates like LeBay and Josh to lean on. I mean, that's really all you can ask for. Well, and let's just let's just um, spitball here. So the other stock cars, okay, coming back. The spec cars coming back. You've driven Mazdas. So if there was a conversation about a new manufacturer to come in, do you think Mazda would fit coming into NASCAR? Uh, I would say they're definitely more well aligned to where they were five years ago, let alone ten or even two years ago. Um, I mean, obviously they don't have a V8 out there in the market. <laughs> Yeah. But um, obviously, especially when they talk about hybrid or something in the future, obviously the next gen car was kind of prepared for that. Yeah. Uh, th- that's where a lot of car manufacturers are going to, obviously with the hybrid technology. 
Um, And a lot of them were in IMSA so they could, you know, develop the stuff uh, like Mazda, GM, uh, trying to remember. There's a bunch of three or four out there, (laughs) but uh, with Acura and all that. So I feel like you're obviously going to see a lot more car manufacturers think about it. Um, I don't know if they're going to take the dive, but obviously when there was V8s out there and stuff like that, it just, it didn't make sense for them. Whereas now there's a lot of things that you see on a modern production car that they can advertise, you know, when on Sunday, so on Monday, you know, actually works where before, I mean, if you had a Mazda decal on a stock car, I don't think you're going to go on, go Monday and buy an MX-5, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> now it's getting a lot closer. So you could see it. Um, and I think that's kind of what NASCAR hoped for. And I, I think that's kind of where they need to go. Um, that you can't keep on relying on, unfortunately, 30 year old, you know, technology. I mean, it provides for great entertainment, but as car manufacturers, they do have to make a dollar. That's no, you're absolutely right. It's like, you gotta keep it relevant. And as I making this, the next gen, this is kind of the icebreaker with the cup series, but making, um, it more back to the approving ground as opposed to a playground type thing with mm-hmm. the cars where there is a little bit more applicable technology that they could translate to a street car as like with the, I don't know, uh, like with the independent rear suspension and stuff with a cup car. I mean, nobody has really a straight axle rear end in their car oh, yeah. anymore uh, unless it's a hobby car, but uh, that, that seems like a good opportunity. It's a good model. I mean, for, um, maybe the DGMs of the world, if they get their roots and their feet planted and, and want to move up one day, or even as this, this model trickles down. Uh, but looking, we're lucky to have you before uh, circuit of the Americas. Uh, what are your expectations for the weekend? Uh, and what's it, uh, have you been there before? Yeah. So we've been there in the past, which is nice. Um, any experience with better than that, I feel like even though it's in a Miata, it's still nice. You know, you got to see the track a little bit. You got eye racing and stuff, but nothing beats being on the physical track, I feel like. But uh, I've been there twice in the spec Miata. We had a big $80,000 win race two or three years ago in ASA. So it was a, a cool event to be a part of then. So now it's kind of full circle and a little bit going there in a stock car. But um, I don't really know what our goals are. I feel like I shouldn't say that I kind of, you have expectations, <laughs> but you just don't want to set the bar too high. I feel like at the end For of the sure. day, you got to be a realist about it. Um, there's going to be a lot of cup guys in the event too now. Mm-hmm. So definitely um, a top 10 would be a lot more meaningful, not saying top 10 wouldn't be meaningful, you know, without them there, but when you're racing against cup guys and stuff, that definitely, you know, is nice. But um, I feel like still, even like I said before in the past events going into them, we could have a solid run in top 15 with no scratches on the car that would be a great day um no no matter what happens even in top 20 still a good day at the end of the day if the car comes back you know and you had a good run and stuff so Mm. i feel like i don't want to set the bar too high i mean like i said last year we had two top 10s which was nice but i mean that doesn't happen all the time (laughs) so you kind of got to be a little bit real about it i feel like so if we can keep all fours on it run top 10 you never know what happens if they throw a green white checkered Looking at the parity and the talent pool, especially when it comes to the road course, and as you said, they're going to have some cup guys in the field too. I mean, if you really – like you bring it home without the car being in a ball, really, I mean, it's it's less work, especially for a small team such as DGM. I mean, you take the wins out of the scenario you get. I mean, if you bring it home without a scratch on the car – Maybe you're not on the lead lap or bring it home in the top 25 or whatever. That's a solid day, really, right? Yeah, and for us, more or less, um, like you said, kind of in a way, it's like at the end of the day when you're battling for 13th or 14th, does it really matter, more or less? You know, obviously you want to finish as good as you can, but yeah, you got to bring these cars back at the end of the day, too. You can't bring them back, getting the car pushed in, you know, on a rollback is not – economically pleasing and <laughs> it's not good for the sponsors <laughs> yeah. either when they see a 35th place finish um so it's really more or less just keeping car clean um it's a big headache for us when we got to really you know tear the nose off um tear you know do a clip or something it's it's not an easy task especially having three cars under the stable and seven road courses this year um i don't know what our plan is for the rest of the year but someone's got to drive these cars too so you don't want to you know hand them back something that's not really usable so it's just really important. Um, keep the cars clean. You know how much this stuff costs too. 
not everyone can go out there and has a sponsor budget to, you know, mm-hmm. door somebody for no reason, I feel like. So you kind of got to have some expectations going into it and be a realist about it and know, is it really worth it to push the issue? Obviously on the last lap, if you're in really good shape at a good finish, you know, you kind of got to do what you got to do, but if you're yeah. running, you know, 15th on back, it is it, you got to kind of got to be smart about it. Yeah. And that's the absolute truth. You know, we've seen a lot of carnage in the Xfinity series on road courses, but there's been a lot of apathy and a lot of, you know, people against changes to the schedule. God forbid we are switching things up after 20 years. Um, you've obviously driven on road courses mm-hmm. quite a bit. Uh, what do you have to say to the audience that's that as against road racing? What what can you talk about um, that uh, road racing can provide? Because I think there's a lot of people that just they look at it and go, "Well, it's just going to be like this." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's kind of proven itself in the past few years, more or less, though in front of everyone with a robo being added the entertainment values there i mean it's the short track and you're turning right and you're shifting all at the same time so <laughs> yes it, it's really cool i mean obviously being a i was a diehard nascar fan i never watched her racing growing up until i got into miatas so i can totally see where they're coming from because it wasn't one of my favorite avenues um mm-hmm. but just seeing the racing that's getting you know displayed like the xfinity finish at uh indianapolis last year was incredible with Amadine and those guys yeah. going at it um, great, great race. I, really if you go back and watch montreal every year they went there and the xfinity or nationwide series at the time yeah. i mean it was phenomenal racing so it's just i don't know i mean if if you can't see it it's kind of hard to you know ex- tell them why they should because i mean all you gotta do is watch it and it's just, yeah it's awesome especially yeah. seeing how the cars are too yeah um, it's not like an oval or it's all aero dependent i mean it really comes down to the yes. driver which yeah. makes it nice well so. yeah Talk about you talked about Montreal. Boris said driving that Zach Spies oh, yeah. RAB. That wasn't a big team. They didn't have a lot of funding, so it it's something that evens the playing field. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, it would <laughs> there, there you go, right there. <laughs> um, we need to get back there, which would be nice. <laughs> yes. But, you know, it's yes. Funny because we've asked this question a bit, and that seems to be the major consensus is that. Um, and I was going to ask. Uh, because you have driven on so many different road courses, mm-hmm. you obviously can can talk about some of the really good ones that maybe we haven't been to in NASCAR. So obviously Montreal uh, is one that we we obviously in Canada oh, would yeah. love to see come back. But is there a track that you would like to see the Xfinity Series go to that you've driven on? Um, yeah, I would like to see them go to Sebring. I'm, I'm yeah. pretty good there, so I like saying that. But uh, yeah. I mean, it'd be pretty cool if, depending on how NASCAR wants their direction to go in the future. I mean, if they could go there during the 12 hour weekend and be a support series with the trucks or Xfinity, oh. I mean, a lot of eyes on that would be nice, but um, I really think you just got to get in front of the audience. Montreal was huge. Obviously having the Canadian support, having Canadian drivers. Now you got LeBay, uh, Raphael, whenever yeah. he's back in the seat. Um, but having those guys there at those weekends is huge. I know you guys know it more than we do having, you know, one driver in the field, but you have someone to cheer for. Yes. So if you could go to there, you know, even go out West, maybe get something out there, maybe like Laguna Seca or find, you know, in the Pacific, you know, region where, you know, Washington or something, Oregon, you know, something a little different. Maybe we go back to Portland uh, mm-hmm. just, to, just to tap into a different audience. Uh, maybe even the streets of Long Beach or something. You just got to put yourself in front of everybody. I feel like this is what I wanted to hear. This, yeah. This could, makes me excited. <laughs> could you imagine stock cars going through the corkscrew? Yes. Like amazing. Well, then oh. there's a, I mean, you got uh, Toronto up there, which would be awesome. We would, a stock car. Obviously, yeah. the Pinty Series yes. puts on a heck of a show there. Oh, um, that's what we got to so, ask, man. Preston, yeah. if See, the just, invitation's there, are you coming up and running a Pinty Series race? If the inv- oh, yeah. invitation's there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I definitely would. There we go. I might have to get my passport done and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I would definitely come from Florida to Canada as long as the weather's. You know, summertime ish. If it's yeah, too cold, I'll we'll pass each other because I want to come down your way. <laughs> we could do that. <laughs> I haven't no, been down that awesome, way in a though. couple of years now, and it's killing me. No, but there's a lot of tracks out there. I feel like even if you go to iconic ones in North America, like Road Atlanta, or obviously they're going to Road America this year, so you can't use that one. But I think when you see that event this year, it's going to be a packed house, 
and those people from Wisconsin really love racing. Um, it doesn't matter what discipline they always come out. Even when we were in the runoffs there, mm-hmm. I mean, there was a handful of people there just to watch an amateur race. Uh, they got billboards, you know, when you're driving through Milwaukee and you never see that for an SCCA race. So I feel like if you can put yourself in a targeted audience that loves racing, um, pure racing, I think it's a win-win all the way around and it's going to provide awesome racing. I mean, there's really never a bad road course. And even if it is single file, you're going to have bumping. (laughs) So it's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the common kind of the the common issue with people is that they feel it's going to be a parade. I'm like, well, we see parades on ovals all the time, so Mm -hmm. you can't really complain. But if you go to, like you said, a road course, there's no, we're not talking uh, arrow, you know, (laughs) question real quick. And the one thing that I think Graydon and I were, you know, so psyched about because we do see it in the penny series is weather. Mm-hmm. and you're going to have less rain issues because they can race in the rain. Now, Preston, you you got to be a part of the – I don't even know if it was a rainstorm or if it was a flood in Charlotte last year. But <laughs> yeah, hurricane. The, <laughs> yeah, the hurricane. Pretty much. Uh, um, is that the type of uh, conditions that you would prefer to see because it does really even things up, or uh, are you okay with – you know, it just being a light drizzle or do you you just like it being a a constant switch? Um, I'd like it to be one or the other. Still, even though if it's rain, it's nice. But when it switches back, I feel like you got to really know your car quite well. I'm still getting comfortable with the Xfinity car, I feel like. So it's harder for me to adapt quicker, um, Mm -hmm. more or less what the other guys are doing. I feel like when it goes from a dry to a wet track, I feel really good. But when it goes from wet to dry is where I struggle a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I, I kind of like the pouring rain and the roval. <laughs> really good run going there. Um, until we got taken out there in the pile up, but yeah, yeah that was it was a- nice. We had road America too before that. They yep. kind of warmed us up for that downpour. Yeah. And I think the fans, I mean, the fans love that, that we don't get, have any delays, you know, it's, it's going to actually, <laughs> you know, the race is going to happen. Yeah. Um, the car handle in that, that type of condition. Uh, did you have to, did you have to kind of work on the fly or was it kind of easy to adapt? Um, it was, you had to work on the fly. <laughs> you yeah. kind of got what you got, which is nice. And those things, amazingly good year has an awesome rain tire, which oh, is okay. hard to imagine being, you know, they never yeah. been in the yeah. rain, but they have an awesome notebook um, with other series they run on. And they, they brought an awesome rain tire. I feel like when you can run wide open at Charlotte in the rain on the banking is pretty, pretty impressive for the That's amount of rain we job. had. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was especially like the Roval. Obviously, they didn't think about it more or less of having a downpour. So the flooding was quite an issue. Um, you just had to work your way around that. And I feel like it's still, even though it was entertaining, it, it provided for a great race too. Um, as a driver, um, you just had to adapt to the conditions you had. Everyone had the same thing you did. So just had to kind of learn on the fly. And hopefully, you didn't hit the puddle the wrong way in hydroplane. But like I said, Goodyear brought a great tire in it. It, it provided good racing too. So 2021, um, what's your, what does your 2021 look like Preston? Uh, I'm sure racers are always looking to, they'll take a race wherever they can if one pops up, but uh, what's your calendar looking like this year? Um, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we don't really have a planned mm-hmm. uh, schedule out. Uh, it's kind of really, we got two or three Xfinity races somewhat, planned out for the year Mm -hmm. um we'll announce those as the year progresses but it's just kind of on the fly um it comes Mm -hmm. down to funding at the end of the day so you never know what could arrive um but it's really do those like i said and then continue doing the spagnana stuff it's awesome for me to be in the car i feel like not getting yeah for sure while we're while i'm being on hiatus while the other guys are racing every weekend and something Mm -hmm. um so like i said being competitive in that helps quite a bit um so we'll do the championships in that car and you never know what could come about, but uh, right now we got two or three, I think, planned out. Well, like we talked about, I mean, what you're driving, I mean, driving, regardless of discipline, driving's driving. It keeps you sharp in the in the sense of competition and mm-hmm. and and technical driving and that sort of thing. So, 
uh, whatever you do, man, we'll, we'll be rooting for you for sure. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> yes. But, uh, we will be rooting against you on Monday night racing. Oh, I, I know. This is uh, yeah. yeah. I hope you knew this was coming. Uh, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta compete with our boy, uh, Steven Ellis driving the uh, 46 with our stickers and scuffs logos on there. So. Yeah. We got a dog in the fight. <laughs> well, I can put a decal on there if you guys want to <laughs> yeah. too. Well, we will send you a, de- a decal. And there we'll get we go. It on the Preston Partis car, because um, you made some pretty big news with that. You got uh, you announced that you're going to be with um, S- Space Station Gaming, yep. Um, yep. which is, I mean, that's a pretty reputable team to go join. Um, how did you get involved with the Monday Night Racing, and uh, what's your thoughts on? It? Yeah, so <laughs> double question there with the yeah. um, Monday Night League. It's an awesome group they got going. Um, a bunch of guys from the racing industry that I've grown accustomed to and met over the past two years, um, take part in that, which is nice. So to have some bragging rights when we get back to the racetrack is always nice. But uh, yeah, the space station thing's funny because me and Will were in the final four last mm-hmm. year yeah. um, and the winner gets a big green egg and we made a deal before the race. Um, no matter what happened, I was going to get the egg if me or him won. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, in return i'm like hey i'll do your space station stuff and um he actually ended up winning um that deal and i kind of felt bad that was a lot of money for one of those so i kind of (laughs) let him keep that but i wanted to hold up my end of the deal at least and run his logos Uh, he's got an awesome (laughs) awesome esports team going on over there that races in the coke series which is continually to grow in popularity so anything Mm -hmm. i can do to help them out is always nice thinking graden a big green egg with our Pinty's meat from up here. That's a good combination. So got to, got to potentially look at, uh, yeah, we got the hey, plug gotta, there too. <laughs> yeah, plug our, plug our Pinty's you might want to, yeah, you might want to tell them, Hey, if you, got, if you end up winning that one of you guys get a yeah, big green egg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see you put some decals on Preston's car and see if you win a big green egg this year. Yeah, yeah, no, but it's awesome though doing that. I mean, like I said, you get to race against a bunch of guys in the industry, and yeah. you get to race against a lot of other people from the motorsports. Will, Will Power, James Davison, yeah, um, you got Kyle Brilliant. Bush, Stefan yeah. Wilson, yeah, uh, SVG, Van yeah, Gisberg SVG. from yeah. Australia. I mean, so, you can't ever do that in the real world, you know, with a bunch of people unless you do an IROC or something. So it's awesome to do that every Monday night. Exactly. Every Monday night, you can make sure to cheer on stickers and scuffs. I guess we just broke the news with with Preston Partis and Stephen Ellis. Now, I guess we can add add that on there. Um, but uh, we want to thank you, Preston, for coming on and joining us today. This has been a lot of fun, and uh, we really do um, cheer for DGM more than anybody else. You know, there are the little team that could. As Graydon always makes sure to tag them as the little team that could. And uh, we're really, really pulling for you at, at Coda. I, I have a good feeling about this since you've got experience there. Just got to uh, avoid all that chaos from the cup guys. Don't know how to run a, tr- uh, a uh, road course race without running into each other. So um, uh, if we can, uh, can we plug any of your uh, sponsors? Yeah, of course. Um, we got a tight program going on, but it's we got Chinchor Electric, um, the NS Utilities that are on the Xfinity program, um, and obviously – DGM for helping us out doing the Xfinity program without them. We wouldn't have been able to show up to races last year and this year um, and have the effort we did. Uh, Tony for crew chief. Um, like I said earlier, without him, I don't know where we'd be at. Um, we're able to bring great cars to the racetrack too. Um, so like I said, it's only a few guys that get the effort going. We've got a bunch of little guys too, that help out um, small companies uh, each race weekend. So anything helps for us, but uh, yep. That's kind of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I mean, we root for DGM because like I said, it's like we, they, they're the little team that could. And like I say, they, they earn every inch of every race distance. And, and you guys seem very like-minded in that your nose down hard work and, and, and want to get the best finish uh, at, as possible uh, for the race. So um man we we thank you so much for coming on uh the boys uh also and good luck at circuit of the americas and and whatever else 2021 brings for you man i appreciate it like i said earlier it's an honor to be on here I, i'm glad i kind of could have completed the uh, 
DGM group. So, <laughs> and yeah, we also, yeah, same thing. We got like you, we have to thank DGM. I mean, uh, from Mario on down, I mean, uh, um, just a great bunch of people and, and super fun to, to sort of collaborate and, and with you coming on to, uh, another, another check on the list. So this has been <laughs> super cool, man. Also, I forgot. I, I put the shirt on just because I knew I was going to be on here tonight, but, yes. um, also I got some merchandise out now. So we got, yes, DGM plug away, man. Plug drivers. away. Yeah, I think even Josh has some now too. So I think Alex needs to step up. <laughs> you got website. It's like, do you have your website up? Uh, yeah. Like- yeah. Just go on PrestonPartis.com and, um, there you, go. you guys can get it there. The Miata and the uh, Xfinity shirt. Hopefully we'll get some more going up, coming out here soon. Excellent. Well, we got to make sure that we're, we're actually probably going to go and get some right now. Thanks to Preston Partis for joining us on the Stickers and Scuffs podcast. Make sure to cheer them on DGM Racing, Preston Partis. How can we find you on social media, Preston? Yep, I kept it really simple. Just type in my name, <laughs> Preston Partis. And yes. um, that should be all my links. I, Facebook now has Preston Partis page, uh, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. If you want to watch any of my former Spec Me Auto races, I always upload those, which is nice. Um, so you can watch that action too. But uh, I think that's really all of them right now. I don't have a TikTok, but um, I think everything else you can follow Preston Partis on. Ryan Vargas would be very disappointed in you. I know. <laughs> He's my only follow on there, though. So he should be happy. <laughs> <laughs> if I did have one. If I did, I forgot it. But I would follow him. We're good friends on the iRacing League and fierce competitors, too. So Nice. Oh, it's great to hear. Well, thank you, Preston. Thank you all for tuning in on the Stickers and Scuffs podcast. We will catch you all next week.